I am welcoming Alfonso Diaz, a network relations manager, and Lucy Dawson, our manager of claims dispute, to present today's webinar on claims disputes and appeal submissions. And I'm going to pass it over to our host today. Thank you. We're doing a little overview regarding what is a claim dispute. Uh, disputes involving the payment or denial of a claim, imposition of a sanction or reinsurance, uh, file dispute based on a claim denial, a claim payment, or dissatisfaction with claim payment. Uh, before initiate, uh, initiating a dispute, you would try um, all other attempts um, to contact your C, uh, CICR team, your network team, and to follow all applicable laws, policies, and contractual uh, requirements. Um, how to file? Uh, filing must be in writing and must be received within 12 months after the date of service or within 12 months after the date of eligibility is posted or within 60 days of the date of denial. Submit to the Mercy Care Appeals Department. Um, this is required documentation. You need to state the factual and legal basis for the relief requested. All supporting documentation needs to be added to your appeal. And uh, Mercy Care responsibilities are that we will send an acknowledgement letter within five days of receipt of uh, receiving your dispute. And we will make a decision within 30 days after that receipt. Um, if an extension is requested, we have up to 45 days in order to make um, a decision. Um, so when you're uh, submitting your um, dispute, just make sure that all information has been submitted um, with your dispute, any medical documentations, uh, authorization, and so forth. Um, also, the remit uh, kind of helps us too. Notice of decision. Um, that is what we send out after the 30 days to let you know what um, has been um, either if the appeal has been upheld or has been um, overturned. Uh, the date of this decision is on the letter, and we do have factual and legal basis for the decision. The provider does have a right to a state fair hearing if they do not agree with our decision. Next slide, please. Uh, claim dispute withheld or overturned. Uh, so if we are upholding it, we are um, the decision when the original determination is maintained. Uh, that means that we agree with the original uh, decision and you will, we will uphold it. That is when you can send that over to a state fair hearing. If it's overturned, we um, actually have this reprocessed um, on our end and we send it over to the claims department. And we have, uh, I believe it's 15 days from that date. So you should uh, be receiving um, an explanation of benefits after the 30 days. Um, next slide, please. So um, appeals upholds. Um, once a dis uh, notice of a decision is received, the next option is a state fair hearing. Um, network management is unable to reverse the decision. So if you go back to them, asking them to refile for you. Um, we're not, they're not able to do that. Once a decision has been made, it is final. If the denial is for a different reason when overturned, you can file another dispute. So let's say um, you submitted for timely filing, which was overturned and it was reprocessed. Then the claim denied for no authorization. If you are stating that there is authorization on file, that is when you can go ahead and resubmit for a, a, a you know, another dispute. Um, next slide, please. So, um, submitting claim disputes. Our preference is to submit via fax. Our fax number is there. Um, we also have our mailing address um, here in this box and our email. Um, when you guys submit fax uh, requests to us, it's a lot easier for us to 
uh, give you the um, acknowledgement letter um, more timely, and it's also um, easier to go and find. When you mail it into us, um, we only keep um, hard copies for so long. So if you're requesting us to look at a status that you mailed something into us, sometimes we're unable to find that original um, mail. And the way mail service is sometimes, it, it does get lost, unfortunately. So um, if at all possible, please, please, please fax us. Um, I know that there's other portals um, that are used like um, Ability and uh, ECHS. And, but again, our preference is through fax. Um, next slide, please. I think that's uh, it for me. Let's check. Um, yep. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. And so prior to submitting claim disputes, we want to encourage that the providers work with our claims in inquiry claims research department regarding denials. They'll be able to assist in identifying if there are any provider load challenges, such as provider credentialing. Um, they may also be able to assist in denial trends or identifying projects. And if that route is, is not, um, if that route does not meet your needs, then I strongly encourage working with the network relations representative for further assistance. Some examples of matters that are not overturned, these are the most common trended according to appeals, is timely filing issues, prior authorizations, retro authorizations. And I also want to note that for Mercy Care Advantage participating providers, you are not afforded appeal rights. And so the alternative to to this process is um, the resubmission process. You're not limited to how many resubmissions that are you're available or afforded uh, as, as long as you get the outcome that you're looking for. And so we'll go to the next slide. And so on this slide, I just wanted to summarize where you're, you'll be submitting your initials, your resubmission and your corrected claims. We did have a change in, in mailing address as of January 14th of this year. So for Mercy Care Claims Department's mailing address, it is PO for Mercy Care, it is PO Box 982975 for El Paso, Texas, 7999. I'm sorry, 7998 And for Mercy Care Reba, it's PO Box 982976 for El Paso, Texas, 79998 we do, I also want to specifically call out for family planning services. There is another change in that. That PO box is PO box 9829780, El Paso, Texas, 79998-2975. Um, I want to also note that the mail will be forwarded from the old PO box to the new, P, new PO box for the next 12 months. I strongly encourage that we adopt this new uh, mailing address as soon as possible. And when you're submitting or resubmitting or uh, submitting a corrected claim, please make sure to address it to the attention of the resubmissions department. This will ensure that it does get routed appropriately for reconsideration. And if you're filing electronically, there is the options electronically to indicate ut utilizing a seven indicator that will flag it in our system as a reconsideration or a replacement claim. And so we'll move on to the next slide. What should not be sent to the claims disputes? And these are examples that we just want to reiterate. Um, it's kind of been shared in the previous slides, but I just want to reiterate a corrected claim and a resubmission are routed through a different process and should not be filed as a claim dispute. So examples of that are, are changing or adding modifiers, anything that's being billed with the um, seven indicator or if you're updating the dates of services. And then at this time, I wanna read the definition, the health plan's definition according to the provider manual of a clean claim submission. So Mercy Care follows the access regulatory definition of a clean claim. A clean claim is defined as a claim that may be processed without obtaining additional information from the provider of service or from a third party. And so claims that are not processed are unprocessable claims, AKA voided claims. When claims are voided through our system, they need to be 
resubmitted as uh, until they're considered a clean claim submission. If they are avoided claim that you are trying to appeal, that unfortunately is a an invalid submission. And then for your EDI unprocessable claims, there's a level two report that your vendor would supply you to identify any claims that the health plan has rejected. So make sure you're you're referencing those reports and the uh, correspondence that would be sent to you. And on to the next slide. Here are some examples of some corrected claims. We have two images here on the upper. This is a, a example of a facility or a UB claim. On the upper right hand side, you'll see there's a seven indicator on the build type. This is indica indication of a replacement claim. As well as on the lower left hand side, you will see that there's uh, identification of a corrected claim. Uh, and further, you can either provide further details or simply identify it as a corrected claim. And on the next slide, we'll see a CMS 1500 example. If you are utilizing this claim form, there is a section under box 22 where you would identify the previous claim number in box 22. And um, as this example reflects, there is a correction to the modifier that was utilized. So they actually added an additional modifier and this was filed as an appeal rather than a reconsideration. And so we're just trying to highlight when to utilize a resubmission or reconsideration process over the appeal process. Keeping in mind that the appeal process is the um, last option for a provider. And I believe we have two more examples that we'll review. So the next slide is going to be reflective of a provider who outreached our claims inquiry claims research department, and they were able to obtain some information about a claim that was voided or an unprocessable claim from uh, that was identified in our system. What happened in this case is that provider submitted an appeal. And again, because the claim is considered unprocessable, this would be an invalid appeal submission. And then the next slide is reflective of a paper claim submission that a provider submitted and our vendor returned. So you'll see it's um, from our letterhead, but it, it was from our vendor who identified that this claim is unprocessable. So an unclean claim submission, and it identifies the, the rejection code and uh, the details to the apl applicable claim. So another claim that is considered voided that would not be appropriate to file an appeal or dispute on, rather to have resubmitted through the resubmission process or reconsideration process. And our next slide will provide um, additional support for you, additional information that's available. If you visit our website at www.mercycareaz.org, we have wonderful tools and wonderful resources that are available to you. Our, our provider manual is easily accessible on that website. It is an extension of your contract. So we strongly encourage that our providers, when doing business with Mercy Care, use this as a supporting document or a reference tool. An additional tool that was developed uh, quite some time ago was the claims processing manual. This is a, it's a similar document to the provider manual, but it provides a lot more support from a claim perspective. And so these are great tools that are available for you. Um, they they help you navigate and do business with Mercy Care. 